In my last video, we checked out this 2009 Toyota RAV4. We figured out that it definitely needed a transmission, so instead of buying a transmission brand new or finding one in a junkyard, we decided we were going to take this one out and take it apart to see what's wrong with it. And that's what we're doing today. Now when I finished up my last video, we were working on the top side of the transmission, and that's where we're going to start today. And on the top side, we got to get the air box out, got to get the battery out, the battery tray underneath the battery. Then you have access to the starter, and it's nice and clear once you get the starter out of there to get everything disconnected from the transmission. Transmission lines, solenoid plug-ins, speed sensor plug-ins, transmission linkage. We're going to get it all disconnected. All right, looks like we got everything on top of the transmission disconnected. Got the starter out of there. Got the, even a dipstick out of there. Got the shift cable loose. Um, we're just going to take the trans lines loose from the bottom once we drain it. And then take that mount loose from the bottom. And we got a mount on the back back there we're going to get from the bottom. And then we're going to be able to put a, uh, put a jack underneath of it and start getting it out. So... Moving right along, moving right along. All right, so first thing we really need to do down here is get these, oh man, I just messed up my GoPro, is get these exhaust studs loose. Now, that's um, gonna be a little difficult back here because that's gonna be, uh, you know, not that easy to get off. But right here, Right here, these don't look too bad. And I've already sprayed them down, so we're gonna see what that looks like. And we're gonna drain the transmission while we're doing that. Uh, you see it's already draining itself a little bit. And we're gonna get the ball joints too.
So you'll hear some people talk about how all-wheel drive vehicles are harder to get the transmission out than front-wheel drive vehicles or rear-wheel drive vehicles. And that is true because it does add some extra steps. And this is one of the steps here. You have to remove the rear drive shaft. And it's a two-piece drive shaft. And it's stuck on there pretty good, as you can see. And it doesn't come off that easy. Now, the next thing you have to do is remove the all-wheel drive transfer case from the transmission. Now, it is bolted to the transmission in a pretty tight spot. And it's pretty hard to get to to get all these bolts out. And very hard to get to the bolts. And it's very hard to get out of there. As you can see, I'm taking my time with it here, and this is sped up about four times. So it, it took a little bit of finagling to get out of there, but we finally got it out. And once we get it out, you just got a free transmission attached to a motor, and you just got to unbolt it and put a jack underneath of it, and we're ready to come out. So we got the transmission out of the car. Now it's time to get it on the bench and we're going to take this thing completely apart, figure out what's wrong with it. And we're hoping it's not some huge issue where we got to replace basically everything inside this transmission. We're hoping it's just one small part that's broken and we can put it back together and stick it back in the car. some carnage in there for sure definitely got some carnage going on Woo. that is nasty all right we're gonna go ahead and remove the valve body next Just like that. And you'll see the reason it sprung off like that here in just a second. They're here. We're gonna put these in order as they come out and the way they come out too. Sometimes you can All right. Now we're gonna get this off of here. Now usually you can just like 
be able to tap up on some of this stuff. First, we get the differential out of there because that's taking up a lot of weight. Now, getting this bitch out of here can be. There we go. Force clutch way down in there. That, that dot goes up. Just remember that. That dot goes up. Mm -hmm. And then the step. All right, there's some uh, clutch material in there or something. Plastic melted or something. Plastic bushing melted. Thrust washer here. Probably burnt. I think that's the second break right there. One way clutch here, I believe that's F2. Oh, okay, now we're finding some carnage here. In order we grab it out, we got some damage in here, I can tell you. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, buddy. That explains a lot. Holy crap. Some more metal chunks. So, this is, uh, you know, that's honestly supposed to attach to that. So I don't care if it falls. To be honest. <laughs> That's a little bit of carnage there. Now that the transmission is completely disassembled, we know exactly what's wrong with it and we know exactly what parts we need to get. 
And all that was really wrong with this thing was a broken low reverse hub. And over time, this metal inside this transmission gets really, really hot and the metal gets weak. And that's the reason it broke. It gets so hot because when Toyota designed this RAV4, they put a cooler on it that's just not efficient enough for this transmission. And over time, it gets less and less efficient and that metal in there gets hotter and hotter and hotter. So we're going to fix that in the next video by pinning a brand new auxiliary cooler on the transmission. And we're also going to replace this low reverse hub assembly with a brand new hardened steel one. And that's going to make it last a little longer and make it a little more durable. Other things we're going to do to this transmission, we're going to buy a kit with all new friction clutches in it. And we're also going to buy a paper and rubber kit with all new seals and gaskets in it. And we're going to be replacing all the seals and gaskets in this transmission and going through every drum and piston as well to make sure everything is back properly the way it should be. Now we're also going to need a few more small parts as far as plastic thrust washers go and maybe some steel clutches for our direct drum. We will be installing all of that in the next video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook to keep up with all of my projects. I have a whole lot more work to do and I have plenty of content coming out for you so you will not want to miss it. I also have a Patreon coming out soon so you can learn directly from me how to do the things that I do. Until that comes out, go buy yourself a Stay Dirty t-shirt and remember, you either get right or you get left.